My name is Don Galliano, um, and I had spent one year in Iraq um, as the commander of the medical forces, um, the U.S. medical forces, and the um, theater surgeon for the Combined Joint Task Force. I was the hospital commander of Fort Campbell, and it was at that time that 9-11 kicked off. I was at Shea in my office in the hospital of Fort Campbell when 9-11 kicked off. Um, and the forces that were deploying in response to 9-11, for the most part, came from Fort Campbell. Uh, and so I was able to be in the mix of that um, initial part of that response to 9-11. Uh, you know, after I returned from war, it was, it was, it was, you know that you're a little different, you know you've changed. Um, you never heard the word PTSD from my mouth. You never um, saw PTSD in writing in any part of my record. I um, approached my primary care provider with my wife and I and started to explain some of the things that I do, some of that, that are, I, you might call hyper-awareness, hyper-alertness. Um, caution. I gave a few speeches, gave a few presentations, and and would find myself immediately just decompensating into tears whenever I talked about any of the experiences or any of, of the time. And that seemed to be getting worse. So I never could quite understand because the time between the events and the time when I finally decided to do something was long and so when I asked, so when I, after I talked to my primary care provider she sent me to a psychologist and I asked the question, could it be something related to to my exposure in combat and she said well what happens is over time it's like any other chronic disease if you don't try to make it better it just continues to get worse until the point in which it starts to express itself so I was satisfied with that I said, so what do I need to do? And she recommended, she had trained at Strong Star, and she recommended that I consider enrolling in the research program at Strong Star. I was deployed to Iraq where I first started seeing a lot of the combat related PTSD cases and at that time I did what I would ordinarily do was look at the literature, you know, what's, what does the literature say and the best way to treat uh, PTSD in a, in a combat theater environment and I was a little bit shocked to see that there was basically no evidence at all so there had never been a study on not only how to treat PTSD in the war zone but there had never been a PTSD study of active duty military. Um, it seems pretty simple but the the worst event that's happened in a person's life there's often horrible things that are there and they often lock it away in the back of their mind and that, that's they sometimes they've never told anybody about it they don't want to think about it they want to push it away you know the military term you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps and move forward that's what many people have done and, and sometimes in the war zone you don't have time to think about it because you gotta you just have to keep moving so they get kind of locked away and those are the things that you know people continue to suffer from are the memories you know, Oftentimes with PTSD, the alarm that goes off is like a stress response. So there's increased heart rate, adrenaline, sweating. You know, there's this real panicky feeling that occurs, but it's a false alert. There's no real danger, but the body's been conditioned to react that way. And another example would be going into a restaurant. You know, um, you know often you hear about people that one they don't like to go to a restaurant. If they do, they sit with their back to the wall so they can they can look out for danger. Um, and so part of our exposure will be to gradually work on you know, going to a restaurant, but also you know, sitting in a restaurant with your with your back to the door or, or with your back to the rest of the restaurant, initially feeling really nervous and anxious perhaps, but the reality is the likelihood on a daily basis of someone, you know, being being assaulted or something really bad happening in the average restaurant in America is very, very low. And um, so these these are the things that people are avoiding. So the the we call this real world or in vivo exposure to get people back to um, doing the things that they did before they were deployed. Doing Doing the things that gave them, you know, pleasure and enjoyment in their life. Um, exposure therapy um, required you to recall episodes and events 
that you tried not to recall that maybe have some associated emotion with them. And, um, and it was about to bring out that emotion so that you can learn how to deal with it. You can understand how it feels rather than just denying it. And so <clears throat> um, it was a daily, for three weeks, um, a daily what they called exposure therapy. And then some what they called homework, which was going through or exposing yourself in real world situations that might um, replicate uh, what was causing some distress or anger or frustration. Uh, with uh, the veterans that I see, again, we're looking at different categories. So the first one is a trauma the trauma reminders. And so I've had people with combat exposure, I've asked them to listen to um, explosions on YouTube. I've had people go to uh, the military hospital here in San Antonio. Um, I've had people that are, once they're out of the military, become very triggered even just by seeing their uniform and what that symbols is. Um, or the idea of seeing a wounded soldier, which is why I send them to the hospital, um, is problematic. Uh, of course, we get a lot of, let's go to the mall, let's go to um, stores. A lot of service members that come through here that they avoid um, crowded areas because in combat, in Afghanistan or Iraq, um, crowded areas signal danger. They avoid loud noises like uh, fireworks on the 4th of July. Um, that becomes a trauma reminder. Um, so the avoidance is a big piece. You get sort of comfortable or your idea is to make you comfortable with not always having control and not always feeling like there's danger. Part of my therapy was to do rehearse the presentation to the, in front of the post doctorate um, staff that was working at Strong Star. And that's where you get empowered. So this thing that you tried to forget about, this thing that you tried not to rem remember that you try to suppress the memory of, suddenly now became empowering because I was remembering and I was honoring the memory rather than suppressing the memory. The idea of making you stronger or strong star is exactly that. You learn how to, you learn how to deal with the issues, those issues of emotions that, in a way that enables you to um, to um, actually embrace the memory of those emotions. Having a trauma memory is not the same thing as having PTSD. So we all go through lives and we're collecting memories and some of them are embarrassing and some of them are um, scary and some of them are, are happy and, um, and that's just part of the human experience. What PTSD is, um, is not having bad memories or even memories that make you sad um, it's when the memory starts to control every facet of your life. You can go through life having these um, anxieties and frustrations and thinking that it's all perfectly normal, but the reality is um, it may not be. And if somebody says to you, you're different, you're a different person than what I remember you before, uh, the first answer would always be, I'm not, I'm the same person. But the reality is if someone says you're different, you should listen to them instead of saying I'm not.